How many times do I have to say it? We just want trains. But no, no public transportation for us, no buses, no high-speed rails, for us in the US at least. Instead, we're getting flight ride shares, like literally Uber is doing ride shares, or we're doing self-charging roads. Uh, anyway, if you do want to learn more about those flight ride shares, you can check out this video up here. We talked about it a couple videos ago. And yeah, we're getting all these different advancements for transportation, but none of them are actually going to save the planet or be beneficial to the average citizen. You no know, advancements for vehicle technology. And like, I think they're cool advancements. I think they're cool, but are they practical? Probably not. So the topic of EVs, electric vehicles, is a topic for another day, particularly because they're not as eco-friendly to create as you might think or nearly as ethical as you might have thought. Just a spoiler alert, creating technology has never been an ethical trade, I suppose. Even if it is being made in eco more eco-friendly ways, it is definitely not ethical. So always buy your tech secondhand and refurbished. But that's a video topic for another day. For now, we're going to assume that EVs are great and they are going to save the future for the sake of the argument of these self-charging roads. Anyway, hello, I'm Emma, welcome to my channel, where we talk about all sorts of things your ways, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste. I'm starting to do some like eco news here and there, and I saw this article titled, like first self-charging road in the US, and I was like, you're telling me we still don't have high-speed rail? We don't have any rail in the United States? Okay, we have like a couple Amtraks, but what is a self-charging road? Um, it essentially works the same as a wireless phone charger. So let's assume that my camera lens right here <laughs> is a wireless, it's not even wireless, like this will be plugged in to the wall and then I can just set my phone on top and my phone can wirelessly charge from this charging port right here. These self-charging roads work essentially the same thing. A car will drive over the, the charging port or it will park on top of it and it will charge wirelessly. So maybe self-charging roads, though the articles keep calling them that, I think wireless EV charging is a little bit more comprehensive to think about. So the leader in this technology is Electrion, which is an Israeli company. <laughs> That's how I feel about Israel. They're, they're the leader in this technology. I think there are a couple other smaller companies doing it. I'll try to put their names on the screen if I can find them. This is the biggest company, Electrion, and they already have functioning roads in modern day Israel on stolen Palestinian land, as well as in Europe. Now, what is the goal of these roads? Why are these even becoming a thing? So it takes a lot of raw materials to make an EV battery, especially to make EV batteries last longer, especially in places like the US where we have long distances to drive. The goal of these roads is to keep batteries smaller and also increase the, the range of these cars without having to build more charging stations, without having to increase the size of these batteries, but as well as without sacrificing driving distance. And I think this is plausible. I think this makes a lot of sense in places like crowded Europe, places that, you know, it's not as sprawly, not as widespread. And perhaps even in parts of New England and the Midwest, we're a little bit closer than our friends over on the West Coast. Because in most parts of the US, this really won't work. Cause like it's already hard enough to drive EVs across the Southwest, the Pacific Northwest, the Inland Northwest without charging stations, let alone trying to build hundreds of miles of these self-charging roads across some of the more remote areas of the country. As well as the goal isn't so much to be for like individual vehicles, like for you and me, it's rather to be for, for taxis, for buses, delivery vans, and that sort of stuff. As well as the goal is cities. I think this is exactly what this technology is, should be used for and not just for the average people, well, the average EV drivers. It would make electric buses much more efficient instead of having to, you know, get off their route, plug in for a couple hours and then get back on their route. They can stay on their route, you know, drive over a couple of these charging stations. I'm not sure how much they increase the charge, but it can keep electric buses on their routes longer, which can increase revenue. It doesn't take as many buses out of the fleet at a time. I think this is, a, I think this is really cool for electric buses. And they also plan to put these rather in places where cars are going to be parked for a long time. So parking lots, bus stops, traffic lights, that sort of stuff, and not like on a highway where people are only going to be passing over it for a split second. It makes much more sense for you know a, a bus at a red light to charge for 10 seconds to a minute instead of just driving over real quickly, one little charging station. So here's a look at one of these coils put under the ground. It's only a small piece of the road that has to be ripped out. And these coils are placed underneath. Um, we'll talk about how they work in just a minute, but the vehicle only charges when it's over the coils. So you can see why a stopout would be much more preferable than like a highway. Anyway, speaking of these coils, how do they even work? 
I'll let the folks at Car and Driver explain it better than me because I don't understand like car technology all that well. The technology uses a series of specialized coils laid beneath the asphalt with each individual coil connecting back to a series of power managing hubs along the side of the road. Corresponding receiver is also placed beneath the EV and absorbs power as it crosses over each coil. Of course, automakers will need to collaborate with Electrion to have receivers installed on vehicles in the future. That sounds like a lot of hoops to jump through in order to charge your car without having to plug in, as well as an increased price for customers. Will they put them on every EV from now on? Will it be the customer's choice? Be like, hey, I want that Electrion self-charging port thing. Can you attach it to my car? Will they just put it on without anybody knowing and then up the cost of the cars? I think it's too early to tell, especially since there's only one one quarter mile stretch of road so far in the US with this technology installed. And we'll get to the cost in just a moment. But the actual installation of these coils, these hubs and the receiver on the car is very minimal and not that intensive. And it's not that intrusive either, especially for small stretches of city streets. It appears to be easy to install these wherever makes the most sense. Now I think installing these at, at intersections, at traffic lights, will probably be a bit of a pain, especially in busy cities, but I suppose they could do a quick detour. I mean, with the track record of road maintenance in the United States, I don't think it will be quick, but it seems like the process is not that difficult, at least it's not as difficult as I was picturing. But is it efficient? Is this actually going to be worth all of this work? Price-wise, I would say definitely not. So right now there's only one quarter mile stretch of road in Detroit, Michigan, which is about 400 meters. And this is the first in the US. Now, according to MDOT, the Michigan Department of Transportation, it was $1.9 million for Michigan taxpayers with an additional $4 million from Electrion and other companies. $6 million for a quarter stretch of roadway. And that's not like paving a whole new road. That's not ripping out everything and paving a whole new road. That's just putting a couple little of these coils along the road, a couple little charging hubs along the side of the road, as well as if you're an EV driver in Detroit, for example, not only did your tax dollars go towards this project, but now you also have to pay additional money to have that receiver installed onto your car just so you could drive over a quarter stretch of mile of road. Speaking of, how much do these receivers even cost? As for the price of the individual Electrion receivers, they charge around three to $4,000 per receiver. They're trying to get it down to $1,000, but even then, like, that's a lot of money. <laughs> But of course there are some pros. Now you don't have to get off the road and stop at a charging station. You can charge as you drive. And plugging in at like a gas station costs money while driving over it is free after you spent the $1,000 to $4,000 on the receiver. And I think if you're able to afford it, a pretty expensive EV, you can probably afford one of these receivers if you really want to. As mentioned with the buses and the delivery companies, I think this will be a big cost benefit to people like Amazon and these bus companies, because instead of taking these buses off the road, these buses can keep making money while getting charged. So I think it will be beneficial to these companies, but I'm not so sure this would be beneficial to an individual. Hello, it's me editing. And just for the sake of argument on, you know, some people think, oh, it's way too expensive to build rail. And it would be expensive, I'm not gonna lie. But this article right here, where is it? From C the Cato Institute says, it would cost an average of $11 million per mile to build a train. Guess how much it would cost on average per mile to build self-charging roads? Six times four, 24 million because it was $6 million to build this quarter mile stretch of road in Detroit. Just here to say that it is less than half the price to build high speed rail in the US. It would be a very expensive project, yes, I know that, but like price wise, I really can't consider that an argument when we're trying to build self-charging roads. Now, I couldn't find any information on our website about how much this actually charges a car. I couldn't find it on Electrion's website. I couldn't find it on a news clip from the Detroit News. You can check out the full FAQ. I will have linked down below and in the blog post if you wanna read more about their environmental impact, how long they last and so forth, but even on their FAQ page, I couldn't see like how much this actually charges a car. Of course, it depends, I'm sure, how fast the car is going, how long the car sits over the charging port and so forth, but like I couldn't even get an estimate. So they did monitor the first drive in Detroit to see how an EV would charge on it. And this is what they said in the news article. I'm just going to read it verbatim. I can't make much sense of it. If you understand what they're trying to say, please let us know down below. But here's what they have to say. Quote, these numbers could fluctuate as the van moved along 16 kilowatts and nine miles per hour at one point with the van at a 63% charge. That's all they say. They didn't say what the van started out as. Like did the van start at 60% charge? Was the van at 100% charge? We have no idea. Also, it didn't give us like how much it charged per minute, how much it charged per speed, how much it charged per mile, nothing like that. 
So again, if you can make some sense of these numbers or you know more about this than I do, let us know down below how efficient these are at actually charging. My biggest worry with this is that manufacturers are now all going to say, we can make our batteries smaller now. This will save them money, but it will probably increase the price because now you can have these receivers on your car and you can charge while you drive. But what about for the people who don't have access to these? What about the people who like in Las Vegas, for example, there's a big EV culture in Las Vegas and like LA, but the distance between Las Vegas and LA with no charging ports, maybe there was one at the border of, Las of Nevada and California. You drive crazy distances in the Southwest. And what if your battery is being smaller because this technology is being introduced? And now all manufacturers are like, cool, smaller batteries, you got it. I hope that doesn't happen, but capitalism has a playbook and similar things have been done before. It's gonna be the new version of shrinkflation. So it's just something to keep an eye out for. If you are an EV consumer, you want to get an EV in the future. Now, while EVs are a decent step in the right direction because it is reducing emissions after they've been created, but as I hinted at, they're extremely nuanced, EVs are still completely out of most people's price range. Now, add on another three to $4,000 fee to access these self-charging roads, they're even more out of people's price range. And again, since it really won't ever be introduced to rural areas, to probably even suburban areas or highways, this really is only available to city folks, which is fine. I think this definitely is the best place for them. I don't think it, they should put them on highways. Ways. And I think this is really cool advancement for electric buses, electric taxis, electric delivery vans, and so forth. And as I've said a couple times, I really don't think this is a great solution for individuals, and I don't think it ever will be. If we really want to lower our individual carbon footprints when it comes to transportation, trains are the answer, as well as buses, better overall trans public transportation, and so forth. I really do hope, though, that because this will increase the efficiency of electric buses. We'll start to see more electric buses instead of diesel and natural gas buses. I'm not sure how long, you know, the lifespan is of an electric bus because like diesel engines last forever. So there is a perk to diesel. There is a perk to natural gas because it clean, it burns cleaner than diesel, but there's also a huge perk to electric buses. So like there's, there's give and take with all these different types of buses, these bus options. But my hope here is, is that because this makes electric buses more efficient, we'll start to see more electric buses. Just because there's more electric buses though, doesn't mean there's going to be more better public transportation. But as we talked about in the video about, you know, Uber flights, the way to go for public transportation or any sort of transportation for individuals is trains. I think the statistic was around 110 times better to take a train over a plane. Now, of course that is comparing trains to flying. I'll try to find a statistic right here on how much better it is to take a train over a car. But especially with how often people drive individually in cars. My first culture shock when moving back to the United States was in Las Vegas when the high occupancy vehicle lane was two people. Two people in a car is considered high occupancy. That just goes to show you how much people drive a car individually. Every single person I know does it all the time because it's our culture in the United States, especially in the United States where we're so spread out and like none of us work close together. None of us go to school close together and so forth. Where was I going with that? Our carbon footprints when it comes to driving is extremely high because we're all driving big cars that probably don't necessarily get the best miles per gallon and we're all driving them individually. So we're all polluting in these crazy ways when we could just have some trains. Creating the infrastructure for trains would be a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of resources. I know it's not perfect either, but long-term trains are the answer for the environment, for transportation. They hold the most people, they can be electrified really easily. They're the most efficient. They're so much better than trying to make the future electric when it comes to like, individual electric cars. Anyway, that's a video topic for another day as well. If you want me to dive into trains, <laughs> I don't really know what I would talk about. You know, like the environmental implications of creating all this train infrastructure in the US where we are literally starting from scratch. We didn't have to though. I also made a full video probably close to two years ago now at this point on how big oil literally ruined the future of trains for the United States in the early 1900s. You can check that out up here. I love that video because we had train infrastructure a hundred years ago. Trains were the future. And then Henry Ford, <laughs> I don't know who ruined it all. Henry Ford and Andrew Carnegie and the pre-depression era, like first capitalists, the big oil guys, the big transportation guys, the big tires guys. Who's the tire people? Michelin. Do you know that too? Michelin star? Same as Michelin tires. It's my favorite fun fact. Do you know why they created that? So people would drive more. It's all conspiracy. It's all connected. Anyway. <laughs> going off the rails, pun intended. We had the infrastructure staring right in our faces and then it was all torn down. So now we have no choice but to start from scratch if we want this. And it's so difficult to start from scratch when we already have our cities built up around cars. These are my thoughts on self-charging roads and EVs for now. Let me know what you think about them down below. Are they good? Are they bad? Are they the future? Is this the future we want? Let me know. 
Thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. I hope that you learned something, found this entertaining, found this valuable in some capacity. I don't know of any future projects for self-charging roads in the US as of now. There's just that one quarter mile, 400 meter stretch in Detroit, but it is pretty big in Europe. So any Europeans out there, let us know how you feel about them down below. But I'll see you in the next video. Again, thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you for listening to me ramble there at the end, sorry. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye guys. Um, for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, I just got cavities five, six, and seven filled out of 10. So my jaw is very sore. I got it done two days ago. Well, they just go ahead and put it on and then up the, cre up the <laughs> I believe it was around 110 times better to take a bus than a plane. I think I messed up. Did I? I'm gonna try it again anyway.